Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, good morning. How is everybody? Good. I'm Joel. I'm the teaching guy here. And we are starting a new series this morning called Build It. And there's several reasons we're, gonna, we're doing this. For one, if you guys have been following the saga in my life, which I, I don't expect you to do that. You got your own sagas, go right? But uh, we have been building a retreat center in Kerrville, Texas. And it has been a massive project. I was just stupid enough to think I could do it. Um, and thanks to the help of a lot of people... This thing is slowly coming together. So we're building a retreat center for missionaries and pastors. And last weekend, we had an army. Well, it was yesterday. It's just, man, it feels like a lifetime ago. Just yesterday, we had an army of guys and, and ladies from the church here that came out and helped us. We got three of the cabins. Like, they're almost ready to go. Um, so we just, amazing people here. My man Jason up here on the front row, he built some amazing uh, uh, shelves and uh, by the way, Jason's running for city council, y'all. So vote, yeah, vote for Jason. Good, good dude on city council. But I uh, got that done. Got a lot of the cabins done. So I have been learning a whole lot about building. And I'll tell you what, you folks who build stuff, it's it's impressive what you guys do. So anybody, anybody out there in, in in the building business? Okay. Well, let me let me tell you. I think every one of you probably should raise your hands because in one way or another. We're all in the building business. Uh, Jesus talked about how we're building our life on something with every decision we make. And he talked about how he's building the church. And we are the church. And so when we want to build our life, it, building our life is an interesting thing because the life that you want isn't just going to happen. You have to build it. And I talk to a lot of people that they're like, why isn't my life working like I want it to? And a lot of it is because they've been pay- taking the path of least resistance. And taking the path of least resistance will not get you where you want to go in this life. It will get you somewhere, but it probably won't be what you want. And so we're going to be talking over the next few weeks in this idea of build it, in this idea that Jesus is building the church, but we get to be part of building the life that he has for us by the choices we make, the decisions we make, and by what we build upon. So I'm going to talk about three, the kind of the three key elements of what lead to building the life that you're looking for. So uh, it, it, I guess it was like about a year after we got married, my wife and I, we moved to Acapulco, Mexico. Now we didn't move to the nice part of Acapulco. We moved to the ghetto. Uh, so we, we used to call it a cesspool in paradise. All around us was paradise. It was beautiful. We were right on the beach. There were palm trees. There were beautiful vines. But the lady, the grandma next to us was the top drug dealer in town. Uh, The guy that lived next to her had, we were pretty sure had killed two girls and left their body on the basketball court. But he had paid off some cops and he was running around the neighborhood. Um, It was a rough place. But the place that our mission center was there. Uh, when I got asked to move down there, I didn't know how much maintenance was going to be required because it was right on the beach. And if you've ever lived in anywhere on the coast, there's this salt that just kind of hangs in the air and it rots everything. So I was constantly having to change out light fixtures. I'd change a light fixture and three months later, all of the wiring would be rotted. So I'd have to go change it out. And so that was one of my problems. Everything would rot. The other thing was I had uh, these coconuts everywhere. So I, you know, I'd hear thunk in the middle of the night. And a coconut had fallen. It'd break my, my tiles on the roof. You know, we use those terracotta tiles. So I'd have to climb up there. And uh, one time, two coconuts fell so hard, it actually caved in my garage because the wood had rotted. It was just, it was just perpetual maintenance. And when I moved there, I didn't know anything about how to fix anything. But the guy who had lived there before us had built this place from the ground up. The place had gotten leveled by a hurricane. Well, he came in, and right there on the sand, which Jesus talks about not doing. We'll, talk, we'll look at it in a minute. He had built this whole house from the ground up. And every time something would go wrong, I would immediately call him. I'd be like, David, why is this not working? He'd be like, well, what is it? this. And as soon as I told him what it was, he immediately knew where I needed to go and what I needed to do to fix it because he had literally, with his bare hands, built the whole place. Plumbing, electric. I remember one time the septic got backed up and he's like, here's what you need to do. There's this one tree 
and it always is growing its roots into the septic. He's like, you're going to have to go and cut back the tree and then replace that line. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, but he always knew exactly what I needed to do, and then he would instruct me on how to do it. Now, we're not talking about building a physical house here. We're going to be talking about building a spiritual house, and our spiritual walk oftentimes uh, the, it, 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 it always affects what our physical life looks like. But I know that every one of us in this room this morning, we've got an area of our life where, like me, we're looking at a situation and going, why isn't this working? Maybe it's your relationship with your spouse. You're just like, every time I think things are going to get better, it gets worse. You're like, why isn't this working? I read the relationship book. Right? We went to marriage counseling. Why isn't this working? Maybe it's your finances. Every time you think you're finally going to get ahead, this is the year you're going to get out of debt, and bam, the transmission blew on your truck. You're like, ah, oh, there it goes four grand, five grand, whatever it is. Every time you think you're going to get ahead in your finances, you take a hit. Maybe it's a relationship with your son or your daughter. I'm like, man, I gave them everything. Why is this relationship such a disaster? Why isn't this working? Every one of us have an area of our lives, including me, where I'm going, why isn't this working? And I believe that just like I would call David when things went wrong, because he built that house from the beginning up, I believe that we are called upon to do the exact same thing in our lives when things aren't working. We're called to call the builder, the guy who built this world. So Jesus, when he was on earth, one of the key things he said is this. He said, Whoever hears, everyone who hears these words of mine, the things I'm sharing with you, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, this has taken on a whole new meaning in the last year for me, because the place we've been building our retreat center in Kerrville is literally solid rock. Yesterday, we had to do a trench for an electric line, and I went out there with a little shovel, and I was making no headway. So we had to go rent a rock saw. And my man, Sal, he was here in the first service. As soon as he got out of his car, he pulled up. He's like, hey, bro, I'm like, get in the truck. So we got in the truck. We went and rock, rented this rock saw. And for the next four hours, he was riding on this rock saw. <laughs> Took him about an hour to cut through a 20-foot rock. I mean, it's just solid rock. And it was funny because when we, we, we rolled these cabins in, the, 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 you set them up on the the block riser things, and I was like, do we need to build a pad for these things? And the guy's like, dude, you don't need anything. This is solid rock. These houses are not going anywhere. When you build on a rock, you don't need to worry. And that's what Jesus is saying. The rain will come down. The streams rose. So the rain, that's this thing that comes from the sky periodically. <laughs> we haven't seen a lot of it lately, but uh, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house, but it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. And Jesus says, this stuff I'm teaching you, it will literally make your house strong if you'll build on these things. But whoever one who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Kind of like that house in Acapulco we had. We had to build a deep foundation because there was no other option but sand. It says, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash because he hadn't built on the right foundation. And this is what's interesting. I want to focus on this line right here. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. And here's why they were amazed. Because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Jesus said, guys, I know how things roll. Because remember, the builder always knows what's wrong and how to fix it and where things are. And God himself built the world. And it's one of the reasons it's important Christian doctrine we have. We believe that God was, Jesus was fully God and fully man at the same time. I never understood why that was so important until just as I'm kind of getting older, I'm starting to see, man, it was really important that Jesus was fully man and fully God. Coming down and being fully God, he was there, we're going to see in a minute in a verse, when the universe was built. And he understands how this world works so he was able to speak with authority he's like guys i built the place like i know i built you i built your life and this is why it's really important you know 
There's a lot of people get into arguments about, well, was it a big bang or was it evolution or a Christian? It's really important to understand that God is at the center, the foundation. He was the builder of all that was made. And he understands how things work. One of the things I've noticed that uh, I, was, I was talking to David, he was fixing our plumbing the other day, and he was talking about how the, the, the water has to go at a certain angle. It's like a quarter inch for every foot for it to drain correctly. And he knows all this stuff. And I was thinking, you know, that's one of the principles that are, that are in play. Like water, the way it flows, it has to go a fl- certain way. And just like there's physical principles, we know about physical principles. We learned about them in like seventh or eighth grade. Like remember, what goes up must come down. That's the law of gravity, right? Just like there's physical laws, there are also spiritual laws. There are laws that say, if you do this, you'll get this. If you don't do this, you won't get this. And you'll notice a lot of what Jesus taught wasn't rules. And that's what got him in trouble. People are like, well, you're not teaching the rules. He's like, no, I'm teaching something higher than the rules. I'm teaching you how the world works and how the spiritual world works and how the physical world works. And the principles are very different than rules. Rules say, do this, don't do this. Principles say, if you do this, you'll get this. So you get to decide what you want the outcome to be. Jesus said, give and others will give unto you. Press down, shaken together, will they give back to you? So he says, if you want people to be generous with you, be generous with them. He didn't say, if you will give this exact amount, people will be generous with you. That would be a rule, right? And we love rules. Just tell me how much I got to do. Like, what's the minimum amount I got to do? And he's like, no, it didn't work that way. He's just saying, you get to decide how much of it you want based on how much you line up with the principle. And when you line up with the principle, you can fly. Example, we beat gravity periodically when we fly in an airplane. We learned how the principles of lift work. and we can, Now, the plane eventually has to come down. But we learned how to beat those, work within those principles, and we can fly. And the same is true in the spiritual world. When you begin to understand there are spiritual principles in play for how they and how they work you can literally build a life that's beyond anything you could ever imagine and it's not because you're so brilliant it's because you got in line with spiritual principles that god put in place and that is what we call wisdom wisdom is understanding principles and knowing how to apply them my dad always called it skillful living and king solomon he said this he said by wisdom a house is built And he's not just referring to a physical house. He's referring to your life. He says, with wisdom, you can build a life. And by understanding, it is established. And wisdom is the right application of what you know. And that's where things get tricky. Some of the best marriage counselors I know have been divorced multiple times. Like, what? They know really valuable information about how to help your marriage. Now, are they applying that stuff to their marriage? the difference between knowledge and wisdom knowledge is facts wisdom is the ability to apply those facts in a way that benefits you and king solomon says if you want to be wise you build build you got to use wisdom if you want to build your house you've got to use wisdom so i want to look at three things we're going to be unpacking these over the next three weeks but i want to look at the three ways that we get wisdom as we're building our spiritual house and as Jesus is working within us. The first one, the foundation, if you were to compare this to building a house, the first thing you have to lay is that foundation. And the foundation is the logos, which is the word. The words and actions of God ultimately revealed through Jesus. And this is super important, okay? If you ever sold a house and had to get an inspection and it comes back with the dreaded thing that says you've got foundation issues, you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be expensive. When you've got issues with the foundation, it gets costly. And some of you, you know you've got some foundation issues because everything you're doing in life is just not quite working. And it starts at the foundation because maybe you got some wrong ideas about how life works or about how God works. And you really need to get some foundation work done. And the foundation is the word of God. But this is really important because a lot of people, they don't understand why they can't ever get over the hump. But it's because their foundation has a flaw in it. They've been building on the wrong thing. One of the foundations I hear a lot of people use that's just completely wrong and it always leads to disappointment is they say, well, the goal of life should be to be happy. I deserve to be happy. And you've watched commercials that have even told you that. (laughs) On TV, you've had people tell you. You've even had well-meaning gurus tell you. The goal is to be happy. 
And if you're trying to build your life on happiness, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Because you're not always going to be happy. But you can be fulfilled, even in the middle of the hard times. So if you've been trying to build your life on happiness and you're perpetually frustrated, you probably need some foundation work. And we get the foundation of what we're supposed to build on from the Word of God. Now this Logos word is very fascinating because when, when John was writing, uh, in, describing the life of Jesus, he says this. He says, in the beginning was the Logos, the Word. Now here he's talking about God himself being in the beginning with Jesus with him. And he says, and, Jesus, or, and the word, the Logos was with God. This is Jesus. And the word was God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now this is super important. And this is why Christians are so adamant about the fact that we believe that God created the universe. And we didn't just evolve through some random accident. There's intentionality to the way God made you. He made you with a purpose. You didn't, Christians are like, why do they get so hung up on that? Well, it's really important that we believe that God was at the foundation of it. Now, did it take seven literal days to make the earth? I don't know. Was seven days figurative and it was over several thousand years? I don't know. I won't argue about that. You can believe what you want on that. But the bottom line is at the core of it, we have to believe that God was the originator and creator and he did it with intention and purpose. And the world's not random. If you believe we all just kind of random chance, the right thing bumped into the other right thing and it turned into a fish, turned into a monk. If you believe that, what like it's just totally random, you're going to think the world's random, but it's not random. It's ruled by principles. And you can actually learn to thrive with wisdom in this world when you understand those principles that God put into place because he created you. And that's why Christians get so hung up on God being the creator. So we've got to believe God's at the core of it. That's what he's saying here. He says, all things were made through him. If you see it, God made it. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now the light, it shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. No matter how dark things are getting in your life, God's truth will always work, no matter how dark it is. And the word became flesh. This is where it says, now the word, which was this truth, the word of truth became flesh and he showed up in human form. And he lived among us, dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory is the only son from the father full of grace and truth. He's saying this deep, powerful truth, which is God, came down in human form, which is Jesus. And Jesus was absolute, full and total truth walking on earth. And his ways and his actions and what he taught and watching how he responded to things is our foundation for how to live a life that's going to bring you fulfillment and meaning. And maybe as an out response of it, it'll bring you joy through the middle of it too. Maybe not happiness, but you'll get joy. So the foundation is always a word. And and I I know a lot of people that, man, if, if we're talking honestly about their house, they say, man, my foundation's messed up. And if it is, the best thing you can do is start figuring out what is the wrong, like what, what are you seeing about God that's wrong? Something, you've got a wrong view of God or you've got a wrong view of how the world works. And the way we do that is through the second process, which is community. People all the time tell me this, well, me, I just don't like the church, but I love Jesus. Me and Jesus, we got it all figured out. And I tell, I tell them this, you and Jesus may have it all figured out, but it's how you relate to others that proves it. And if you can't function in the church, something's wrong with you. Sure, the church has flaws, but community is where we grow. And this is where it's really key. We grow and are refined through relationships with others. And this is where things can get really crazy because I see people that are like, I read in the Bible and it said this, and now I'm going to go out and do this. And you say, whoa, hold up. No, 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 no. God will always confirm what he's sharing with you through the Bible, through community around you. But you've got to have people invested in your life to speak to you. And community is a powerful thing. You know, there's a guy named Sean Acor, and he wrote a book called The Happiness Advantage. And he's been studying what makes people happy for years. And what he landed on was the key thing that makes people happy is healthy relationships. And he said what typically happens is when people get stressed or overwhelmed, they start pulling away from relationships. But that's the worst thing you can do. He says the number one predictor of thriving in difficult challenges is your social and your, your relational connections with others. 
But that's the opposite of what most of us do. I had a friend one time, and he disappeared from church for about six months. And I'd call him, and he'd be like, oh, we're busy. Soccer games, the lake, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't, six months, a long time he's been gone. Finally, one day I came to him, I was like, bro. I said, Ronnie, Ronnie, where you actually been? He's like, dude, don't tell anybody. But man, my wife and I, we're, our marriage is really struggling. And so we don't want to go to church and everybody see that we're struggling. I'm like, you idiot. Like, this is the best place for you to come to, man. Like when you pull away and isolate yourself, and King Solomon, he says this, he says, he who isolates himself seeks his own desire and he breaks out against wisdom or sound judgment. In, in psychology and counseling, I had a psychiatrist tell me this. He said, the number one sign that somebody is on their way to a deep mental illness is isolation, the first step. When you isolate yourself, it can be very dangerous, even if you're reading the word of God. I'll give an example of this. My wife, uh, she's super extroverted. She gets all of her energy from being around people. I'm introverted. Um, nobody believes that. It was like, you're surely extroverted. I'm not. Like, I put on my game face for Sunday morning, act all extroverted, and then I go home and sleep because it exhausts me doing this, right? Mark, Pastor Marcus is the same way. We're both introverts. <laughs> Natalie, though, man, she could just, whoo, she gets charged up by being around people. So, uh, so, oftentimes Emily will go with Elise and they'll go down and visit her family for a week and she'll call me about the fourth day and she'll be talking to me and she'll be like, hey, have you left the house? <laughs> I'm like, no, no. And she's like, you need to get out of the house. She's like, I can tell you're not doing well. I'm like, I'm doing fine. It's just me and Jesus in the house. <laughs> she's like, no, no, you, you seem frustrated and that's because that's what happens. I'll be reading. I'll even be reading my Bible and doing my devotions. But if I'm not around people, they, kept, they kind of rub the sharp edges off. And I don't like it. It's a lot easier to just be me and Jesus. But it's how you live with others that shows. And, 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 and God will often use the community to correct you when you're off. So like I have a counselor that sometimes when I'm feeling stressed or anxious, I'll call her and she'll always, she always goes back to this. There's some, a wrong perspective you have on God. <clears throat> so one time I was talking to her and she's like, Stop. She's like, that's not true what you just said. I'm like, no, it is true. She's like, it's not true. And she's like, I was like, how do you know it's not true? And she's like, because there's a Bible verse that says it's not true. And I'm like, oh, shoot. She'll point it out to me, and I'm like, ah, oh, and I'll have, to, I'll have to conform my mind to what the Bible says. That's what it said. Don't be uh, conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You get in line with God's principles and the truth about who he is, which leads to the third point. Truth is really big. Truth is absolutely huge. If you ever have somebody tell you they've got the corner on truth, run. Because they don't. The truth, if we knew the whole truth, it would crush us. It would absolutely crush us. So Jesus, in his grace, reveals truth to us in small doses. If you remember, he was the fullness of truth on earth, and we're still trying to figure out what all he taught. I've been hanging out in the church for 40-something years, and I'm still reading stuff Jesus taught, and I'm like... What? I didn't know that was in there. Because it reveals itself to you in different ways at different times when you need the truth. So the Holy Spirit <coughs> is our guidance. He gives us revelation. Right before Jesus left the earth, he said this. He said, guys, there's a lot more I want to tell you. There's a lot more truth I want to reveal to you. I've only been down here for three years, but I got to go back to the Father. I got to take care of some business. There's a lot more truth I want to tell you, but basically... You can't handle the truth. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, this is the third person of the Trinity. Again, God coming down and living within us. When he comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will guide you and direct you. And what he says will always line up with what the word of God says. If you ever hear something from the Holy Spirit, you think, you're like, I think God spoke to me. Always check it through Scripture. Now, I understand we don't know everything that's in the Scripture. So you know where the second protection is? In community. When you think you've heard something from God, if you're like, well, I think I've, I think I've read any verses and all the verses seem to confirm it, check it with your community. Now, this is what happens a lot of times, though. If you don't have a community around you and you've been going solo, you don't know how to check it. And you can get into a lot of deep trouble. Because you don't have any relationships around you to keep you grounded. 
I see this so many times with people. They come to me and they're like, hey, Joel. Basically, they're saying, I just drove my truck off a cliff. Uh, what should I do now? I'm like, uh, hang on. It's going to get ugly. Like, that's the best advice I have for you. And then I'm like, did you check with anyone before you did that? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't you know. You know. I thought it sounded like a good idea. I'm like, why didn't you check with somebody? And in what world did you think that was going to work? It sounds brutal, right? But I see it all the time because people isolate themselves and they lean on their own understanding and try and figure it out on their own. And all the while, the builder of this whole operation is saying, if you'll just come to me, I can give you what you need to thrive and live skillfully with wisdom in this world and build your house in such a way that it's strong. And you're not going to be constantly in financial struggles. You're not going to be constantly in relational struggles. Sure, the struggles will come. But you'll overcome them because you're operating by the guides and the rules and the principles that the the builder of this whole operation builds. But it comes through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so we have the logos, which is the written word. But this is what we call the rhema word. And the rhema word is God revealing truth to you as you need it in that exact moment. And a lot of you, you need this right now. Because you're trying to figure out how to deal with that, with what your kid's going through, Right? You're like, man, there's nothing in the Bible about dealing with my kid's social media bullying or whatever it is. Well, there's nothing specifically that talks about social media bullying, but there are principles about how to deal with enemies, how to deal with things like bullying. So yeah, there's not specifics like do this, don't do that, but there are principles that apply. And when you understand those principles, you say, man, if I do this, I'm going to get this with my kids. Maybe you're in a weird situation relationally, and you're like, man, there's nothing in the Bible about how to deal with this. There is, I guarantee you, but it's probably a principle. It's not a, if your son says this, do this. It's not that. It's a principle that says, hey, a gentle answer turns away wrath. Do you want a gentle answer? Or if you want want to turn away people's anger, use a gentle answer. But it says, but a harsh word stirs up trouble. Wonder why you're having so much trouble with your son? Maybe it's your harsh words. But then there's other times that it says you need to throw out the scoffer. Sometimes you just need to let somebody suffer the results of their decisions. And look, you don't know which, when to use which, but the Holy Spirit can guide you on when to use that. Amen. Amen. Some of you have been bailing your kids out too much, and it's time to let them suffer the results of their decisions so that they can, the Lord can deal with their heart. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, but it says to love them. Yeah, some situations. But in other situations, you got to, there's one verse where Paul says, kick out the brother and let him come to the end of his flesh you go whoa so which one is it i don't know but the holy spirit knows he knows what's going on in your son or daughter's heart and your husband's heart and your spouse's heart he knows what's going on in your finances he knows what you don't see and if you'll seek him his rhema word will come and and he'll speak to you you go god doesn't speak to me well it's not going to be necessarily a booming voice i've maybe heard god actually like a voice maybe twice in my whole life most of the time Honestly, most of the time, you know what it comes through? is confirmation through community. People I trust and love, Pastor Marcus will say something, and I'll be like, oh, that's what I needed to hear. Pastor Marcus nailed it, right? But if you don't have those relationships, you're doomed. Like, yeah, but if I get those relationships, people get up in my business. Let me ask you, how's it been working out for you without people getting up in your business? Is your house a real fixer-upper? A lot of you today... You probably need to acknowledge, yeah, my house is kind of falling into disrepair. Because the first thing to, is to acknowledge, we need to fix this thing up. Some of you, maybe you need to get some foundation work done. You need to start looking and saying, man, maybe I've got some wrong views about how the world works. Maybe my past hurts. Maybe men have hurt me in the past, and so I've got a real bad view of what men are. Maybe you need to get that healed. Fix that foundation. Maybe your view of the world. But I guarantee you this. If you'll go to the guy who built the place he's got the answers you're looking for and this is 101 you start by reading the bible and you say well i don't understand the bible yeah welcome to the club sometimes i read paul and i'm like paul what in the world are you saying man why can't you speak clearly he's talking about these crazy mysteries and i'm like i don't understand it but you know the crazy thing is Right when I need it, something will be revealed to me. I've read that passage a hundred times and I don't understand what it means. And then one day, God will show me, take me to a verse. I'm like, oh, whoa. 
Read your Bible. Start there. We're going to talk next week about how you can start in Proverbs and Psalms. Proverbs is a book about how to relate to, to humanity. Psalms is a book about how to relate to God. And there's one proverb for every day of the month. So today's August 7th. Go home, read August 7th. And don't be surprised if this is what happens. As you're reading the Logos, the Rhema, which is God's spoken word, will go, hey, that verse right there, that applies exactly to that situation with your son. And you'll go, oh, how do you time it that way? It's August 7th. I read the chapter 7. How do you do that? I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And he will speak to you. And this, guys, is how we live by wisdom. So we're going to be talking about this the next few weeks. And maybe you're this morning going, man, my house needs some fixing up. And when I say my house, I'm talking about your spiritual house. Maybe you've got some fear, some anger. Maybe you've been dealing with a lot of anxiety. Maybe you just got, man, your relationships are a mess and you know it. And it's your fault. And you know it. That's all right. First thing is to come to the end of yourself and say, all right, Lord, help me build this house because I didn't do it very well. Or maybe you've just let the house run down a little bit. You haven't been maintaining it. Maybe your spiritual walk's just been kind of going downhill, deteriorating. The next three weeks, we're going to be talking about these three specific things. The Logos, the Word of God. We're going to be talking about the importance of community. And we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit who wants to speak to you and guide you in all truth. I would encourage you, man, if you've got, maybe you say your house is open. Eh, it's all right. But maybe you know somebody that's got a spiritual house that's been very run down. It's a real fixer-upper. Invite them the next three weeks. Because I believe this, this stuff we're going to talk about is literally so foundational. It's the foundation, but if you'll build on this, you'll see results. We're building this retreat center out here, and I was thinking about 15 years ago, I had this vision to do something like this. 15 years. And I think, man, how long it has taken to get here, but we started making choices way back when. We started to not live above what we can afford. We lived in houses smaller than we could then we can, what we could afford, live, drove cars that were paid off, all the save off, save for this. And, and we're about to see these results. And I say, thank you, Lord, for your grace. We made the choices, working in line with his principles, and then he's been coming in and filling in what we can't do. And, and I guarantee you this, if you'll start walking by these principles as somebody who's been living, again, I've been hanging out in the church for about 40 years, but as somebody who's been living by these principles, I have seen God do exceedingly abundantly far above all I could ever ask or think. And it's not because I'm so smart. I literally have no clue what I'm doing most of the time. But I have figured out, call the builder. He knows what's up. And if you'll start doing the same, man, stop trusting the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. He'll build your house. Can I pray for you? Lord, we thank you so much that you have given us your truth. You didn't just send us out here to try and figure all this stuff randomly. There are principles you've put in place. And as we tap into your truth, you are the builder of it all. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to be guiding us. I pray, Lord, for those this morning that are having, man, relationship struggles, their boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, kids, daughters. I pray for those who are having financial struggles. I pray for those that are having business struggles. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you have given us the answers. And it may not look exactly like we want it to be, it's as clear as we want it to be, but in the, in, the tr- in the Word, there are principles and truths you've put into place that we can tap into to help us thrive and live with wisdom in this world. If you're here this morning and not given your life to Jesus, that is the most wise decision you will ever make. Start on that foundation. I'm going to give you a chance in just a second to surrender your life to Jesus. You already know who you are. You've been feeling it in your heart as I've been talking. And as you surrender your life, if you just say these words, it's not a magic formula or anything, but as you say these words, God's going to transfer you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and set you on a path to the glory he has for you. Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way. We turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We've got some resources in the back there for you uh, at the little table there. You guys, pray you have a blessed week. Man, read your Bible, pray, walk in confidence. Be blessed. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and